longest active major college football series continuously played at a single neutral site. And it is a perfect fit from each campus, just under 200 miles. 89th time here at the State Fair. Rivalry matchup is brought to you by Wendy's. Of course, funny things happen in this rivalry. An unranked Texas team has actually won six of the last nine against a ranked Oklahoma. Oklahoma won the toss. Texas to receive. Austin Seibert has 31 touchbacks among his 37 kickoffs. Big leg here. And the true freshman Sam Ellinger will be out there for the horns. Growing up in Austin, we were always going to games to play for UT. That was always my dream. It means the world to me. 6 2, 2 30 is fourth start time. He is a guy who plays with a lot of emotion, a lot of passion. Tom Herman said we might have to try to calm him down a little bit in this game because this game is so important to him. He did get the run out carrying a flag. Very unusual for a true freshman to get that honor before this game. Now Porter in the backfield with Ellinger. As they set up the screen to Porter, blockers in front, and a good start to the game for Texas. Let's go down to the field to Holly Rowe. Well, Texas coach Tom Herman said in making this decision of who would start this game today, how could he possibly take a kid off the field that held over 400 yards last week in a win? He said it has been a difficult decision that sometimes Sam does make freshman mistakes, but the, same, the thing he says, he makes a decision and he believes in it and sticks with it. There's Porter again. Holly's referencing the 487 total yards, third most in Texas history last week against K-State. And 107 of that came running the football, and a lot of those just decisions he made. If he didn't like what he saw on a pass play called, he tucked it and ran, and he runs with physicality. Second and five, Ellinger. Going to throw that away. It'll be third down. Pressure came from Kenneth Murray. Impact players, well, Chris Warren, had the game-winning touchdown last week. He is a physical force at 250 pounds. Colin Johnson can be a matchup problem at 6-6. Okoronkwo is the great edge rusher for Oklahoma. Parker, four-year starter at safety, banged up last week. But watch number 34, who we just mentioned, Okoronkwo, on a play like this. Yeah, here he is right here. That's the guy Texas has to be most conscious of in the pass game. Third and five. Ellinger overthrown the intended target was Lorenzo Joe good tight coverage down the field bump and run coverage this game is going to be a game where all the receivers on both sides of the ball are going to have to make tough contested catches against man coverage that time good coverage by Oklahoma forces the high throw in the punt the Australian Michael Dixon on to punt. He has nine punts over 50 yards this year. Good looking freshman C.D. Lamb, the return man for the Sooners. And a fair catch at the 15 yard line. So 38 career starts, 31 of them at OU with 26 wins for Baker Mayfield from Austin, Texas. How do you think that went over back in middle school, Blackledge? You know what? He's been that kind of guy his whole career. Plays the position with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. People have told him he's too short, he didn't fit in, he wasn't good enough, and all he's done is finish as a finalist for the Heisman Trophy the last two years and playing his best football of his career right now. Incredibly efficient throwing the football through the first part of the season. Completing over 70% of his passes and zero interceptions.
start on the ground here with Trey Sermon, who's able to find a seam on that left side. Let's look at the impact players. As you just saw, Trey Sermon, freshman from Georgia, he's been a force at 90 yards and only 11 carries last week. Mark Andrews, 16 career touchdowns. Malik Jefferson, number 46, a linebacker playing with purpose this year. And Deshaun Elliott, already five interceptions this season. There he is, number four, the safety for Texas. Well, for Texas to have a shot in this game, they've got to defend the run better than they did a year ago. Second and three, Sermon again, and that'll move the chains, a gain of four. Last year, it was a close game, 45 to 40, in favor of Oklahoma, but the Sooners ran for 282 yards, so they were able to do anything they wanted offensively against Texas's defense. Coming into the game tonight, over the last four weeks, the Texas defense has been much better against the run than they were to start the season against Maryland. That will be huge for them in this one. See Mayfield directing Dimitri Flowers. Flowers is a very important part of this offense, does a lot of little things to make it go. Mayfield to pass. Plenty of time choosing his options, and that's off the hands of me. Holly? caught up with Baker Mayfield this week to discuss their loss last week, their first of the season, and he said, you know, it was instant regret. I really thought this group was more talented and more mature that we didn't need a loss to wake us up. So what they did is they had some leadership meetings, they had position group meetings. He said what they came away from with the meetings and watching tape was the little things added up. Receivers weren't in the right spot, they had drops, they missed routes. He said we all have to do our job and just continue to correct the little things. Still so much opportunity ahead. Second down run again. Sermon with a chunk play. Cuts back and gets an extra six yards. 20-yard run by Sermon. Same play. It's a counter play where they're going to pull the backside guard and tackle to lead out in front of this play. And Sermon has done a nice, nice job of being patient, reading the blocks. That time got inside the block of Ben Powers, the pulling guard. And another nice run on the same counter power play to the weak side. Good seal by the right tackle, Bobby Evans. Play action, Mayfield. He's going to launch it downfield, wants every bit of it. And into the hands of Jeff Badette. Sooners score it. Sixteen touchdown passes now in the year for Baker Mayfield. Todd Orlando told us last night, the defensive coordinator, we cannot give them an over-the-top play in this game. Right away on the first Oklahoma possession, a misplayed ball by Chris Boyd, and Baker Mayfield comes away with the touchdown pass. receiving end of that guy's 54-yard touchdown throw, Baker Mayfield. I was actually surprised that when Oklahoma won the toss, they didn't take the football with their explosive offense right away, but it worked out perfectly. They got the stop, and then they got the big play for the touchdown. Now, Oklahoma went with a seven-man protection that time. They kept their tight end flowers and the back sermons in, blocking against four rushers. That's why Baker Mayfield had so much time to allow that deep route to open up behind the defense. And a 33rd touchback of the season for Cyber. Let's go to that man in the studio. All right, Tess, thank you very much. Over on ABC, it is Michigan and Indiana in a Big Ten matchup in Bloomington. 46-yard field goal with time expiring. Griffin Oaks nails it. So the Hoosiers and Wolverines are now in overtime. Once again, the GOM, the game is over on ABC. Also, BC over Louisville, 45-42. Dylan had four touchdowns. 
A great win for Steve Adazio. Tess? A.J. Dillon, who was a big commit to Michigan before flipping to stay at home in New England. So interesting stuff happening in the Big Ten. As Chris Warren is now the featured back with Ellinger, the true freshman quarterback for Texas. Downfield he goes and Johnson tried to go over and make an acrobatic catch couldn't come up with it Well, and I also think Colin Johnson ran out of bounds The referee threw his hat I'm not sure that this would have been a legal catch or not unless he was forced out I thought he ran out of bounds and came back in again good tight coverage down the field by Motley Under one of four passing to start the day So he'll keep it on the ground this time with big Chris Warren. There is Tom Herman, third year overall as a head coach. You know all the success he had at Houston, including a win over Oklahoma. Yeah. Well, their defense played very well in that ball game. They won 33 to 23. They're very physical. They sacked Baker Mayfield six times. Baker Mayfield's a better quarterback this year than he was at that point. Receivers split two by two. Warren in the backfield on third and eight. Here's Ellinger coming around, and he is stripped. It's the guy we talked about, Okoronkwo. They had him single blocked by Denzel Okafor, the left tackle. And it was to the blind side of the quarterback. The first third down, he was on the front side of the quarterback. This time, he comes from the blind side. The arm was coming forward, but I'm not so sure that ball didn't come out first. Texas jumped on it. Play. So the punt team will be out there. I think they're gonna. I'm gonna think they're gonna look at this. Well, Joe, I thought that was the a action fumble. at all, Todd. So. Texas with the recovery Dixon back out to punt. There's no question the arm came forward, but I thought the ball was out first CD lamb good coverage right there at the 30 yard line that was Antoine Davis 51 yard punt no return at all Baker back to business when we come back to big D ESPN College Football is presented by PlayStation View. Watch the biggest moments in sports. Try it free today. And in part by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. I love seeing this. The Navy ROTC programs from both schools running the game balls from their campuses to here in the Cotton Bowl and then playing a flag football game yesterday. By the way, the Navy ROTC program from Texas beat Oklahoma 19 to 13 nine of the last 11 years the school that wins that ROTC game goes on to win this game And if you need that handicapping angle then good luck in life Here's Rodney Anderson and he is met by PJ Locke now, Joe, I just want to go back and clean up a mistake. I thought they ruled the third down play an incomplete pass. It was ruled a fumble. The referee stopped the clock because they couldn't tell who recovered it. It was actually recovered by uh, the freshman right tackle, Derek Kerstetter. So good call on the field. It was a fumble. Texas lucky to recover it and be able to punt the football away on fourth down. And they got off a good one, a 51-yarder with no return. Now a second and nine for Baker Mayfield and the Sooners. Play action. Mayfield skirts out of the pocket, and he's on the go and takes a slide down at about the 36-yard line, a gain of five. He is very slippery. He's doing a better job this year. One of the areas he's really tried to work on is staying in the pocket longer. And when a guy is able to make plays with his feet, sometimes early in his career, he's more inclined to leave the pocket too soon. Baker's doing a better job, but that was a good decision of leaving the pocket and bringing up a third down, a very manageable situation here. Third and four. Anderson in the backfield with the Heisman contender. Mark Andrews, the guy you got to look for here on third down in the slot to the top. 
Mayfield downfield and gets it complete. And indeed, that is Mark Andrews fighting and wrestling for extra yardage, a 22-yard reception. Well, he's a big target, and Baker has a lot of confidence in him. And he's going to throw this right over the fingertips of Nashawn Hughes. Hughes not able to get a deflection on the football, and Andrews able to corral it for the first down catch. By the way, Hughes goes six foot four. He can get up. So a first down past midfield for Oklahoma. Coming into the game, Texas one of the best in the country on third down defense. Couldn't get a stop there. Trey Sermon able to keep his balance. Sermon getting extended playing time because of an injury elsewhere, Holly. That's right. They are without their starting running back, Abdul Adams. That's why we've seen Trey Sermon early and Rodney Anderson. Guys, it is a big miss. He's out with a walking boot on his leg right now because he's averaging 10.6 yards per carry. So they're missing his home run hitting ability, but Sermon's filled in nicely. Sermon is a very physically mature kid for a freshman out of high school. 220 pounds, runs with really good pad level. Second and one, trying to shake free, and somehow he does for another first down. Trey Sermon. Got to wrap up. Malik Jefferson, the leading tackler for Texas, had a chance to stop him right around the first down marker and not able to wrap him up. And again, you see the strength of this young running back out of Marietta, Georgia. Perfect time right now for a play action pass and a shot to the end zone for Baker. They've run the ball successfully so far in the first quarter. Shown some A gap pressure as well as something off the edge from Locke is Texas. Let's see if they back out of it. Lincoln Riley changing the play along with Baker Mayfield, anticipating what you just said, Joe. First down, Sermon again, this time brought down by Hughes. Of course, the upset loss last week. Lincoln Riley said, listen, we've seen the blueprint around here for the last two years of a disappointing loss and what you have to do to rebound from that. Yeah, I think that, you know, he knows that this team was hungry. They were going to be ready to play. They wanted to play as soon as that game was over last week. They had plenty of chances not to take anything away from Iowa State, but they had plenty of chances to put that game away, and they didn't. And now they've got to fight to get themselves back to where they want to be in the national picture of things. But it's not unprecedented, particularly in the college football playoff era. Anderson met at the line of scrimmage and brought down there for no gain by Malik Jefferson. In the opening game, when Texas lost to Maryland, very disappointing loss, they gave up 263 yards rushing to the Terrapins. Todd Orlando said, we just thought that we had a lot of bad habits corrected. It didn't happen, but since that time, they have been much better against the run. They've given up a total of 263 yards in their four games combined coming into the day. But they've got to do a better job stopping this Oklahoma team running the football. Eighth play of the drive, third and eight. Empty look here. Texas showing three man. They bring pressure. Mayfield gets it away and gets it complete to Andrews. Ball came loose at the end there. But Andrews, the big target downfield for Oklahoma again. Well, first of all, I think Oklahoma got away with a little movement right here. I thought the left tackle, Orlando Brown, moved early. And then Reckon Hager is not able to get him to the ground. And once you allow that quarterback to step up in the pocket and elude pressure, Baker Mayfield is going to make plays. Or the officials say they're going to mark it down at the 11-yard line. Cooper Castleberry heading up this crew today. 16 yards on third and eight. You get a free rush on Baker Mayfield, you better get him on the ground because if you allow him to extend the play, he's going to find an open receiver. Anderson trying to cut back. Instead, he's brought down by Malcolm Roach and the rest of the Longhorns front. Really good penetration. Puna Ford did not get credit for the tackle, but he made the play. His penetration on the inside is what forced the running back to move it outside, and that's where help was for the tackle. Puna Ford, one of the real leaders who have been very productive so far in the season for this Texas defense. So backed up to a second and 15. Mayfield, quick 
throw and gets it complete to Jeffrey Meade. It's too big of a cushion. This part of the field, that, that's an easy throw and catch for a guy like Baker Mayfield. It's a short throw because they're on the right hash and he's throwing to the right sideline. And just a very large cushion out there by Chris Boyd made for an easy throw and catch. Third and five can get a first down right at the one yard line. Here's Baker. Look at the time he's got. Spins around. Pump fake. Trying to dance for something and couldn't find anything but Malik Jefferson chasing him. Well, that's good discipline by the Texas defense. Baker Mayfield extended that play as well as he could. It's zone coverage. It's not man-to-man, -man and all eyes are on Baker Mayfield. Look at all those white helmets. They're looking at the quarterback and staying near the receivers and minimizing the opportunity and forcing a field goal attempt. The 25-yard attempt from Austin Seibert. Two of four on the season so far. And Oklahoma got that 12-play drive with three. Tens in Sooners. At Namburk in our college football studios, Michigan in their final three drives of regulation went nine plays, five yards, but then Karan Higdon scored a touchdown, and then Peyton Ramsey intercepted by Tyree Kinnell. So Michigan wins it 27-20 in overtime on the road. Back to Joe Tessitore. Back here at College Football, presented by PlayStation View as part of Dos Equis Tailgate Week. So a win for Michigan, Ron Higdon, young man from Sarasota, Florida, with 200 yards and three touchdowns today. Sam Ellinger in an early hole here. Texas hoping they can get a spark from this guy. He plays with great charisma. When I saw this play last week against Kansas State, his willingness to give up his body and run through a would-be tackler, it just reminded me of another quarterback that I used to love to watch, Tim Tebow. I mean, Ellinger has a long way to go to catch up to Tim Tebow, but that kind of physicality and that kind of toughness is what has really earned him the respect and the love of his fellow teammates here with the Texas Longhorns as a true freshman. He was a top five dual threat quarterback recruit a year ago from Westlake High School down in Austin. And here he is on the run. One stiff arm, a second, and then surging ahead. Holly? Well, Ellinger can be as tough as he wants, but he's got to have some protection up front. Texas is now without another starting offensive lineman. Jake McMillan is out today. He is available in emergencies, but he's got a big club on his hand. So Terrell Cooney is sliding over to that spot. It is the fourth different offensive line that Texas has started in the last four games. That's a problem. Yeah, especially that name, Connor Williams, being on that list. They're all America left tackle. Here's Ellinger again. Is they're committing a little bit to the quarterback run here on this series. Not much there. Just a yard will be third and four. Yeah, trying to run over a defensive end is a little different than trying to run over a safety. That time Ellinger tried to lower the shoulder and run through D.J. Ward. Not the same deal. Big third down play right here for Texas, as Holly mentioned. It has to start with protection, and that means you have to start by knowing where number 31 is. And I would not want to single block him too many more times in this ballgame. And they're moving him around. He's back on this side, which is the blind side away from Sam Ellinger. See if they chip with a back on that side. Third and four. Ellinger does have time. Now being chased and just had to throw it away. As it was Kenneth Mann, the first to get after him, and then Okoronkwo closing in. Well, they did do a nice the quarterback job. quarterback was out of the pocket and threw the ball beyond the neutral zone. No intentional grounding. Fourth down. They doubled on Okoronkwo. They single blocked on the other side. And D.J. Ward, I think, was the first guy to kind of force him out of the pocket. 
another good pass rush on third down, and they didn't have to commit extra bodies. It was a four-man rush, and they were able to collapse the pocket with four. As Dixon gets off another big ball here, as it bounces at the five and rolls in to the end zone. Of course, coming up later tonight on ABC, it is Utah and USC from the Coliseum. That's coming your way at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. You know, Utah has won two of the last three meetings, and Sam Darnold has thrown nine interceptions this season. But, of course, at home, USC over the past year has been something tough. He is a fun guy to watch, as is Baker Mayfield. I, you know, there's certain guys that I don't have to pay to, to watch him play doing this job, but I would pay a ticket to watch certain guys play. And Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold are two guys that I enjoy watching play the game. They Baker. love playing ball. I mean, that, that's the thing you know about Baker Mayfield. Even watching him in pregame and before the game, his energy, his excitement, his spirit, he loves playing the game of football. Quickly gets it to Bidet. Bidet had the 54-yard touchdown earlier, and he's able to pick up three extra yards at the end of that play. So Baker Mayfield's had so much success, but against Texas, a one and two record in his career. Of course, did have a loss as a starting quarterback at Texas Tech as a freshman. Yeah, he was great last year, though. 22 of 31, 390 yards and three touchdowns. Again, they rolled up 672 yards of offense. A full start by number 74 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still second down. Cody Ford in there at one of the guard positions. Drew Samia is back in the lineup. He didn't start the game, the right guard, but he's in there now. That's the first penalty of the game. Again, I thought Oklahoma got away with one on that last possession. But that was the first one that was called. Mayfield, strike downfield, a little too high for Michael Jones. Holly. Well, just before they were ready to snap that ball, Jeff Bidette, the guy who caught the last touchdown for the Sooners, took himself out of the game. He's hobbled off. It looks like a right leg. I can't tell if it's cramps or if he's got an injury. Keep in mind, I did Holding. test the field. It's about 101.5 101 degrees on the field right now. Wow, so the temperature and field level is significant. Holding on Orlando Brown, the left tackle, and... It has been in the low 90s for the past few hours here in Dallas. Not a cloud in the sky. Second and 20 after the holding. Under shallow route. This is Brown, and he gets free and spins his way all the way out to the 30 yard line. That should move the chains. Well, it's an under route, and it's thrown quickly, and they're blocking downfield right away. The other receivers, this is by design. They throw this play quickly so that they can get engaged in blocks, and they executed it very well there. So just over 20 yards on second and 20 for Oklahoma. Mayfield over the middle again wide open is C.D. Lamb and he is inside the 30 yard line and just like that Boomer Sooner downfield 44 yards. Well here's Lamb he's going to go in and they're going to go out and there's going to be a big opening in the middle of the field and again Baker Mayfield is going to see this and get the ball down and quickly to Lamb again as he is forced out after a nine-yard reception. C.D. Lamb is very electric with the ball in his hands. There was some question if he would play today. He got injured scoring a touchdown in the first quarter last week and did not return for the rest of the game. But he's looking good so far. 
Well, half the crowd is reacting as Nashawn Hughes is down on a knee at the end of that play, and those would be the Oklahoma fans booing as some tempo was finding success for the Sooners' offense. As medical staff is out to see Hughes. Team captain, veteran leader, the senior linebacker for the Horns. We credit Oklahoma and their execution on this drive because Texas had a chance with the two penalties to really flip the field and have them backed up. They had second down and 20, and they were able to execute beautifully to get the first down, and now they're inside of Texas's 20-yard line, just like that. Again, the efficiency of Baker Mayfield this year. He leads the nation in completion percentage, passing efficiency, and yards per attempt. And he's not doing anything to hurt those numbers today so far. Play caller's dream, second and one with momentum. Sermon met at the line of scrimmage and driven back by Jefferson. Baker Mayfield marching the Sooners. That's the end down. of the first quarter. He's eight of nine for 179 yards, and he has hit his last eight. And Oklahoma leads 10 zip in the Red River showdown. End of one. AT&T Red River Showdown right here on ESPN from the State Fair of Texas. Joe, are you a ketchup or mustard corn dog guy? No, you know what I am after going out there? I'll go with the funnel cake bacon queso burger is what I am, Mr. Blackledge. Dimitri Flowers on third and one. He's going to be maybe just short of the line to make. But where do you stand on the corny dog? Well, I like corn dogs, but I'm a mustard guy on the corn dog. Fourth down and one now. Uh, Oklahoma has all the momentum. It makes sense to go for it here. Their defense is playing well. And you've got a veteran experienced quarterback to get the right play dialed up here. Big Dimitri Flowers in the backfield. And Mayfield is going to split out, so they will direct snap to Flowers at 247 pounds. And a timeout is going to be used here as Oklahoma. Oklahoma calls we'll call their it. first timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. 30 seconds. Folks, you know it by now. That ESPN app is where you want to live on a college football Saturday. You can stream every ESPN and ABC college football game live. Get the access to scores, news, and highlights. Or you could just do this. Here's that man. I'm always available, Tess, whenever you need me. Updating you on Georgia Tech and Miami. This is J.J. Green with the five-yard touchdown. 7-3 for Georgia Tech. It's over on ABC, almost through one, Joe. Things are really getting interesting this weekend, aren't they? You see the active FBS win streaks. Miami sitting there at nine. They got a battle on their hands today with the Yellow Jackets. So the reset after the timeout. Oh, Oklahoma not under the center very often. This could be a quarterback sneak. No, nope, they're going to go with a direct snap. Fourth and less than a yard. Here's Flowers, fourth and one. Up and over for a first down. It's a counter play that's been so good to him here in the first half. Watch him start to his right and then follow the pulling guard, Samia. Jason Ools with the tackle, but Flowers easily converts the first down. Baker Mayfield started this game with a missed pass. It was actually a dropped ball by Jeffrey Mead. He's hit his last eight. Might be throwing here on this first down play. Give it to Sermon, and Sermon wrapped up that time by Brandon Jones. So a tackle for loss for the Texas defense. Really good job by Brandon Jones coming up and maintaining leverage on the outside, not allowing the ball carrier to get the ball to the perimeter. 
This Texas defense has felt good about the way they played coming in. They were number one in the Big 12 in terms of fewest opponents yards per game, and nobody had converted a fourth down against them up until moments ago with what Flowers was able to do. Second and 11. Sermon splits out. Anderson on the carry, cuts back inside the five, reaching for the end zone, and in. 15-yard touchdown run. Same play, Joe. The counter pulling the backside guard and tackle, and a beautiful job by Rodney Anderson feeling the play and cutting off the block of his tackle, Bobby Evans, for the cutback run to the end zone. This play has really been effective against this aggressive Texas defense so far in the first half. get the sense that the worst thing that could happen at Texas was what Iowa State did last week. This Sooners team is focused and they are executing. Rodney Anderson, well, he suffered a couple season-ending injuries, a knee, a neck injury, but just a little glory here in the Red River Showdown, his second rushing touchdown of the season. Did you catch the pig racing next door at the Texas State Fair? No, I missed it. No, check this out. Fortunately, our guys didn't miss it. And they had Texas and OU saddlecloths on, too, as they make the turn for home. And then down the stretch, Oklahoma with the lead. But surging in the two-path was the Texas pig to win the pig racing here at the State Fair. So they won the ROTC flag football game. They won the pig race, but they trailed by 17 in the big game with 92,000 here. I did have a lot of bacon for breakfast this <laughs> you now. every day in your life and I don't doubt a double cut pork chop coming back at the hotel when we settle in to watch that game on ABC tonight Oklahoma averaging 9.7 yards per play 17 to zip Anderson the 15 yard touchdown run moments ago Texas is gonna find some offense here Porter will take a knee. Adnan, what do you got? All right, Tess, thank you very much. It is the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive update. This is offered in LSU. And how about carry on Johnson? 13th rushing touchdown leads the nation. He's been alone for Auburn. 17 nothing right now, Tess. At Auburn, offense has been looking good. As we look at the college football rankings, you know what happened to Clemson last night. You know what happened to Washington State. So everybody who was saying, oh, we have no ranked versus ranked this week. You never know in this grand game, do you? Every Saturday is another drama unfolding in front of our eyes. Here's to Neil Carter, a gain of two yards. Good looking freshman from outside of Houston. Texas needs to get something going here for a lot of reasons. They've got to stem the tide a little bit. They've got to let their defense rest and recover a little bit and try to change the momentum in any way they can. Only about 20 yards of offense total for Texas, and most of that on the first play of the game, the screen pass. There's Ellinger as he weaves his way and then takes a couple Sooners for a ride. It'll be a third and short gain of eight. needed first down for Texas well, he did not get it by much but I think his initial surge got him to the mark Oklahoma proving to be very stout on defense tonight their defense has kind of been struggling since Big 12 play started gave up a lot of passing yards and points to both Baylor and Iowa State but this is a different looking Oklahoma defense so far in this ballgame Ellinger to pass now. Quick strike on the slant to Gerard Hur. To your point, since the beginning of Big 12 play, Oklahoma has allowed more pass yards per game than any other team in major college football time. Well, Baylor did it with their quarterback throwing 50 times. It was a game that Oklahoma led the whole way, 
but they had to keep fighting to the end. And then last week, a backup quarterback, Kyle Kemp, from Iowa State just lit him up. A false start by number 56 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still second down. And now, this is a huge penalty for Texas. It's not a... 15 yarder or a holding, but they finally had some momentum. They had second down and short, and now they go back. That's why you see the look on Tom Herman's face, because they finally had something going, and now they're behind the chains on second and long. Ellinger, there's an under route this time to Humphrey, and he shakes free. Lowell Jordan Humphrey with a good gainer past midfield, 16-yard reception. And credit the little assist by Tennille Carter, the running back, who came back and blocked while he was trying to get away from a tackler. And I think Carter actually knocked the tackler off of Lowell Jordan Humphrey and enabled Humphrey to get the first down. Nice effort by the freshman back, Carter. Chris Warren, maybe a yard on Texas's first play run in Oklahoma territory today. Is that kind of a first quarter for the Longhorns? Warren remains the back here. Pressure coming in on Ellinger as he goes down. And that was Bledsoe getting to him. Bledsoe does a nice job of just kind of following the movement of the lineman. Here he is right here. He's just following the movement of the lineman and then goes directly to the quarterback. And I think it just kind of surprised Ellinger. He didn't hit him very hard, but I think he surprised him by being in the backfield at that point. Third and 14. Sooners fans roaring for a stop. Ellinger will check down to Brewer. Up and over, and he gave a little something to Jordan Thomas. 230-pound true freshman from Lake Travis High School. Nice job by Brewer. He first stayed in and chipped on Okoronkwo and then was able to leak out and make the catch and bring up a fourth down. And Tom Herman, feeling like desperate times require desperate measures, going for it here. Fourth down and eight. Oklahoma going to call timeout. Oklahoma calls their second timeout of the half. So Tom Herman and the Longhorns offense facing a fourth and eight when we return. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA, and AT&T. Texas quarterback Sam Ellinger's high school, Westlake, beat Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield's high school, Lake Travis, 21-14 last night, and that snapped a 10-game losing streak for Westlake to Lake Travis. And now they're opposite each other here today in the big one. The Red River Showdown as Texas faces a fourth down. No man's land puts them in a fourth and eight. Colin Johnson, the big receiver, is down here at the bottom. Working on Jordan Thomas. Ellinger trying to escape. Throws it low and incomplete. Desperate to get it to Colin Johnson. Okoronkwo was coming after Ellinger. Well, this is, this is just poor protection because there was only three guys rushing for Oklahoma. They've got to be able to give their quarterback a little bit more time. Oklahoma was one of three rushers, and he ripped right through there and forced Ellinger to leave the pocket, and then he didn't make an accurate throw. If you have five blockers and three rushers, you're supposed to win that battle. So a turnover on downs. So it goes to the guy who used to be the quarterback for Lake Travis. We bring that up because earlier in the week when Mayfield was asked, what do you know about Sam Ellinger? 
He said, I know he's never beaten Lake Travis. Well, that ended last night. It was a good effort by Westlake's quarterback, Taylor Anderson, who had himself a good game. That game was tied up in the fourth quarter before Westlake won it. Quick throw to Dimitri Flowers out to midfield. Reminder coming up tonight, it'll be Sam Darnold in action as Utah takes on number 13, USC. Baker Mayfield, 9 of 10. And the only one he missed was a drop ball by Jeffrey Meade. I mean, he has been right on point and showing you why he is playing his best football in his final season here. Second and three, Anderson. When we talked to Lincoln Riley and when we talked to Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator at Texas, they both said the same thing. You can see that he is a more mature quarterback. He is really taking more control of what's happening at the line of scrimmage. He's not leaving the pocket as quickly. He's directing things at the line of scrimmage and doing a great job. And right there you see him go up with a quick goose snap to try to get the quarterback sneak for the first down. See where they mark this ball. As Lincoln Riley looks on. Youngest head coach in wow. major college football. That mark not looked get a very like good they brought it back by a full foot. And remember, the yellow line is unofficial, and they're going to call for a measurement. Baker tried to just sneak one in there. He's not the biggest guy at 6'1", 215, 220 pounds, but he tried to go with a quick count and just kind of surge forward for the first down. And... Texas was alert to get the stop. That was Malik Jefferson coming over the top. He did a good job of stopping the forward progress of yeah. Mayfield there when you take a look at that view. Let's see here. Just crunching down on top of his back. And that's a tough place for these line judges to get a good view with all that traffic in there. And you see they are short. Well, they went for it the last time on fourth down. They went to the direct snap to Dimitri Flowers, this even shorter, or right around the same distance. That's what they've done on fourth down for the season earlier today, converting. That was the second time that Oklahoma failed to convert on third and one. Mentioned coming into the game before that last fourth down, Texas the best in the country. Opponents were 0 for 7 going for it on fourth down. Oklahoma will try to make it two for two here. From just beyond midfield. This time Anderson is the running back. Flanking Mayfield. Fourth and one. And a penalty flag comes in. Yeah, a false start on Oklahoma. There was confusion a false right start away. By number 56 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. I don't think there is a 56. It had to be 58, the center, Eric Wren. But there was confusion. You could see the right tackle, Bobby Evans, was talking to the left guard and left tackle like there was some confusion on what the play was supposed to be. A lot of talking and moving and heads turning, and there it was, the flinch by the center, Eric Wren, number 58, that drew the penalty. So Seibert, who does all three of the kicking duties, on to punt. For the Sooners as he drives this ball inside the five and it's gonna settle wow. in there great coverage downfield that time Jordan Thomas pinning Texas I mean this one looked for sure like it was gonna bounce into the end zone you don't want to field it but instead of bouncing forward it bounces backward and Oklahoma doing everything right right now Adam Ann Burke with this PlayStation View multi-view, letting you know that Georgia Tech Miami's on ABC, currently a 14-6 game. And Maryland and Northwestern love Bortenschlager. He and DJ Moore hooking up 14-10 right now from Maryland. Back to Joe Tessitore and Todd Blackledge. Yeah, man, I saw Rozier only has 19 yards passing for Miami. Texas from the one-yard line. Porter barely getting out into the line of scrimmage. 
D.J. Oh. Ward with the tackle. We talked to Tom Herman last night, asked him about his memories or thoughts about this game. He was a, a G.A. at Texas. He said, oh, yeah, the one that's embedded in my mind, 2000. We lost 63 to 14. I'll never forget that. This one here not going a whole lot better at this point than that one that he remembered. Ellinger as he's able to get free. Oklahoma Game just looks, three. they just look faster. You know, they look faster and they're beating Texas to the point on both offense and defense right now. This is a team that was very bitter, very angry after blowing a lead at home and losing to a team that they felt they, that they should have won the game. And they are feeling like that a lot of messages were delivered and heard from defensive coordinator Mike Stoops and Ruffin McNeil who handles the defensive tackles. And we know what was said from Lincoln Riley. Third and six. Ellinger from his own end zone. Incomplete. Looking for John Burke. They have collapsed the pocket on a consistent basis, and they have played tight man-to-man -man coverage down the field. They are not feeling threatened at all by the Texas passing game to this point. And because of that, we may actually see Shane Bouchelle because he is a better, more accomplished thrower than Sam Ellinger. Not right now, but we might see it before the day's done. And now Michael Dixon needs to get off a good punt. Shorter snap, this part of the field. Takes a bounce and not cleanly fielded by Lamb. So just over five minutes to play here in this first half. We will we see Shane Bouchelle. Glad you're with us for ESPN College Football, presented by PlayStation View, part of Dos Equis Tailgate Week. And you better have a good stomach if you're tailgating here at the State Fair. Are you a ride guy? I like some rides, yeah. Yeah. Ben Warden, Adam Ramirez from our crew. I think Lincoln is going to cut Baker Mayfield loose on this possession. There's 540 left in the half. They get the ball to start the third quarter. Trick, Trick play. play. Trey Sermon downfield. Wide open is Brown. Cutting back. Sooners on the go again. I kind of knew Lincoln Riley would be aggressive on this possession because it's a chance to really put Texas in a hole. I thought it would be Baker Mayfield throwing it. Instead, the trick play with Sermon works. And then with tempo quickly getting it out, that was a forward pass incomplete looking for Lamb. You have a lot of time to the talk about on the field it. was Here's an Sermon. incomplete forward pass. Show block and then run by him. Actually, he was coming from the slot, I believe. Nope. Show block, turn back out. Beautiful execution. Again, the poise of the freshman back, Trey Sermon. Knows he's going to get hit, stays in there, and delivers the strike for the big play to set up the Sooners again. A chance to score right before the half and get the ball to start the third quarter. Their fifth play over 20 yards today. And here is Brown again. As he kept his balance and made his way to about the 11-yard line. You mentioned fifth play over 20 yards. They had 34 coming into the game. They were averaging almost seven of those a game. It is a it has been a big play offense, but an efficient offense. Zero interceptions by Baker Mayfield, averaging almost nine yards a play offensively, and, and those numbers are kind of right on track today. Hard to defend when a quarterback is as efficient as Baker has been this year. Third and five. Mayfield. And so he was looking for Sermon that time. It'll bring up fourth down. I think he was looking for Mark Andrews first. Sermon was coming out on a little bit of a wheel route, but it was well covered by Texas. They were in man coverage. And they had everybody accounted for on the weak side of the formation. Now Andrews did have two receptions on third down prior to that. So now 
Seibert in for his second field goal attempt of the day. Made from 25 earlier, this from 28. And the junior from Belleville, Illinois, makes it a 20 to nothing game here at the Cotton Bowl. Well, we're always on the lookout for the Taco Bell student sections. Taco Bell, a proud partner of the college football playoff. You see these passionate fans here in Dallas. Of course, the neutral site splits the tickets right down the middle. It gives you nonstop energy throughout the day, although the Texas offense could use a little of that energy. Cybert on to kick away after his second field goal make of the day. Four kickoffs, four touchbacks for the big way, Cyber. But Porter will have a return this time. As Porter able to get free beyond the 25 and still making his way out. Good return that time. And it was Cyber who had to get involved on the tackle. A 41-yard kickoff return for Kyle Porter. One of the areas where Oklahoma has not been great this year, what they give up on kickoff returns. They've been averaging, giving up 29 yards. Porter does a nice job of running through some arm Excellent tackles. Play. And I think there's a personal foul late hit at the end of this play. It wasn't much, but it was a tackle out of bounds. And so Texas, after the good kickoff return, the penalty, with a little bit of something going here. And to your point, maybe not so good at kickoff returns because they don't see it That's often. Right. He, up to that point, had 35 touchbacks on 41 kickoffs this season. Yeah, they just kind of took a break on that coverage, probably expecting Cyber to drill another one out the back of the end zone. And Texas able to capitalize. Now let's see if they can turn that into any kind of points. Their longest kickoff return this season. 41 yards sets them up. And now with the penalty beyond midfield, Ellinger as he muscles his way to the 36. And when he runs the football, he runs more like a fullback than he does a quarterback. He's not trying to make people miss. He's tucking that ball high and tight, and he's lowering his head and shoulder and trying to get positive yards. He runs north and south. Escapes the first would-be tackler and a second and then a stiff arm for good measure and a penalty flag comes in at the end as well. You made that Tebow comparison yeah. earlier. There are moments out there. I actually thought he made a mistake on pulling the ball and keeping this because there was a corner blitz from the outside and he ran right into it. A personal foul. Horse collar tackle by number eight of the defense. It's a 15-yard penalty and it's first down. So this is kind of a read play, but there's going to be a pressure right here, and the quarterback probably shouldn't keep this into this kind of a rush, but he keeps it anyway and is able to elude the first guy, and then here's the horse collar at the end. That penalty was on number 14, Emmanuel Beal, and so two personal foul penalties by the Sooners really helping the Texas cause on this drive. Sherrod Hurd motioning out, former quarterback, do-it-all kind of guy for Texas. Cat blitz, corner coming off the edge at Ellinger, able to get rid of it to the end zone. And that is incomplete. But he had heat coming in after him, didn't he? Usually you see that blitz to the short side. This was coming from the field, and Ellinger never saw it coming. He's able to get the ball off in time that could have been a hit up around the head and neck head and neck injury area as well parnell motley was the guy that that came on the blitz and hit ellinger up around the head no penalty called on that one and texas was second down and ten tom herman wants a timeout this is a critical critical possession Texas calls their first time out of the half. 30. Now Texas needs points. 323 to go here. Time for our Aflac trivia question. This is the 112th Red River Showdown. What's the most played rivalry in Division I football?
out critical. Look at what happened in the first quarter here with this Texas offense. They just couldn't get going. Yeah. Critical that they come away with something. Here. Absolutely. I mean, you'll take a field goal, but you really want a touchdown because Oklahoma's going to get the ball to start the third quarter. you got to cut into this lead the best you can. A smart timeout right there by Tom Herman. Make sure you're all on the same page and you get the play dialed up exactly the way you want it. Trying to set up the screen, finally getting rid of it, and Porter into the end zone. Kyle Porter, hook him horns. Well, this is all made by Ellinger, just extending the play. Oklahoma coming with the blitz. They're coming with pressure. Watch Ellinger read the pressure and just get away from it long enough. As long as that ball is caught behind the line of scrimmage, you can have guys running downfield the block. And that's the way you set up a screen, but Ellinger able to extend the play long enough to make the completion. Perfect use of the timeout and the right call against that defense. No doubt about that timeout. Make sure you know what you're doing. Got the best play on the field, and they did. When you play man-to-man -man or pressure with a blitz, you're playing man-to-man. -man. Ellinger able to just stay away from the pressure enough, have a nice throwing lane to Kyle Porter, and something finally good for the Texas offense. Sam Ellinger, the true freshman, his mom, Jenna, they've been through so much. Her husband, Ross, died when Sam was just 14 years old. She has said, Sam has been my rock at times. True freshman starting for Texas in this grand rivalry and finally breaking through with just over three minutes to play before the half. You know, nice execution on that touchdown play after the timeout, but a poor kick coverage by Oklahoma and two personal foul penalties on that drive extended it. And Texas was able to capitalize, but really mistakes by Oklahoma on that drive as much the reason for that score is Texas. Yeah, they needed something and they got the 41 yard kickoff return. And then the two personal fouls for 30 extra yards. And then coming up big was Ellinger to Porter. A lot of time here left in the first half for Baker Mayfield in Oklahoma. Let's check in with that now. All right, Tess, thank you very much. Coming up on the Lexus Halftime Report, they needed overtime, the Wolverines did, against the Hoosiers in Bloomington. Also, the U on upsell alert, Georgia Tech, causing the Hurricanes some issues, and also Auburn looking great against LSU. Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer, and me coming up at the half. Tess, back to you and Todd. Look forward to that. Auburn has definitely found their gear now. 314 remaining here before we visit with the guys. They'll get us up to speed on everything happening. Baker Mayfield just keeps rewriting that history book. 199 consecutive passes without throwing a pick. That is now the Oklahoma record. I think they're going to come out throwing in this drive. I really do. Texas is starting to settle down against the run. Only 65 yards rushing for Oklahoma. And Baker's only attempted 10 passes. Straight up the middle. Escapes it. Tucks, runs, Mayfield, jump play, slides down at the 41. Jefferson couldn't get him. Came straight in, though. Again, you see the slippery nature. Actually, it was a blown block by the running back, Rodney Anderson, but Baker Mayfield made the play anyway. Jefferson should have been picked up by Anderson. He wasn't. And Baker Mayfield able to slide to his left and elude the tackle and turn it into a big scramble for a first down. 16 yards as Oklahoma looking to quickly answer after Texas and their touchdown moments ago. Anderson, good hole, pass midfield, Rodney Anderson. Texas showing blitz from the field. They were a little bit weak on the backside. And Baker Mayfield saw that and alertly called the run to that side. And two big plays to start this possession. Lots of time. Still over two minutes. And Oklahoma with one timeout in their pocket. And another big gainer. Their sixth play today of 20-plus for Lincoln Riley. Who's the play caller? 
Coach Stoops, when unexpectedly this past June, got the phone call. They move it on up. Head coach of the Sooners, 34 years old. Let's go to Holly. Well, Baker Mayfield told me that one of the biggest lessons they learned after last week's loss at Iowa State is, you know, playing in the Big 12, you're used to a ton of possessions per game. He said, I just feel like we didn't have a sense of urgency on some of those possessions. And what happened against Iowa State is they controlled the ball. We didn't get as many possessions and as many series as we're used to. So their goal for today was to have a sense of urgency every time they had a possession. And we have seen that so far right now really going hard into the end zone if they can before the half. Yeah, the only thing they haven't done perfectly well is they've had three red own possessions but only one touchdown and that's been something they've been really good at Mayfield a little pump backs out and then gets it to the near side to Meade who tries to tiptoe the sideline he stepped out of bounds but Baker Mayfield just doing a beautiful job eluding pressure Texas has had some clean rushers around him but he has not lost his composure. He's known when to try to run for the yardage and when to try to throw for it and keeping his cool. Texas just not able to get him on the ground. Third and three. As Andrews, his favorite target in a spot like this, went in motion. He's now the number two receiver, top of your screen. Looks to the slot on that side to Jones, and that's incomplete. Yeah, that was just a play that Baker rushed. He read the blitz. He saw where the pressure was coming from, and he tried to throw right into the voided area where the rush came from, and it just wasn't an accurate throw. Now fourth down and three. Set the glean clock to 102. 102. Fourth and three for Oklahoma. Again, Andrews in the slot right here. The big receiver. And the one Baker has the most confidence in. Intercepted by Bob. He read it every which way. He fooled Baker Mayfield because his first couple steps were like he was going to rush. And then he peeled off and Baker Mayfield let go of the football assuming he was rushing. And for Baker Mayfield, his first interception in quite a while. And it 202 come, throws time. Couldn't have come at a better time for the Texas defense. Their ninth interception of the season. His last turnover was an interception at West Virginia last season. 202 throws without a pick, and then that. And now Ellinger trying to get something going here with under a minute to play for the Horns. So Texas has two timeouts left. And you know, they did a really nice job last week. Even though they didn't make a field goal in regulation to win the game and had to go to overtime, they moved the football down the field in the last 45 seconds. And so I think that's why Tom Herman right now feels confident in Sam Ellinger to try to do it again here before the end of the first half. Second and two. Ellinger over the middle. And that is complete at midfield to Hemphill Maps. The first time we've called his name, he had 12 catches a week ago, and his first catch tonight. For two timeouts remain for Texas. Ellinger looks right, now comes back left, and then gets it complete. Humphrey, and Texas is going to have a chance here. Ellinger doing a great job rolling to his left. You have to get your shoulders square to throw that ball accurately down the field. He does that. And Texas in business here again. Like you just mentioned, they still have two timeouts. Clock is stopped right now because it was out of bounds. Ellinger with pressure in his face to the end zone. And that is beyond Hemp Hill Maps that time as Stephen Parker had coverage. 25 seconds remain.
the one thing right now that you don't want if you're Sam Ellinger is a sack. You're in field goal range. Obviously, you'd like to get closer and try to, to score a touchdown, but no you don't want to sack. The ball was uncatchable. Empty look here with Warren in the slot. Second down. Ellinger. Complete again. Humphrey. As he is inside the 20, and a timeout will be used. Well, we enjoyed Texas this great rivalry, and we asked you in the Athlac trivia question, what is the most played rivalry in Division I football? The answer, want to take a stab, Todd? No, but I didn't know that. I From Eastern PA, Eastern Lafayette, school. and Lehigh. Known as the rivalry, they first played in 1884, 152 games in. Lafayette took it on the chin to Harbor today, 38 to 10. But Lehigh put up 54 in a win against Georgetown. And this is the 112th meeting of the Red River Showdown. So Tom Herman used a timeout beautifully last time to set up the touchdown. Third down and short. You still have one timeout. If you get the first down here, the clock will stop to reset the chains. So you don't necessarily have to go to the end zone on this play. You want to try to convert and get a first down. That's Porter coming back in motion. Looks that way, comes back the other way. Inside screen for Johnson. And remember the first down will momentarily stop the clock. 11 seconds until they get set up. Still a timeout remains. Porter is the back here. He can clock it in this set. Looks like they're going to clock it and try to save the timeout. And that only took a second oh, off like of the game clock. Now they can take a throw at the end zone if they want. It's Dimitri Flowers getting an early head start to the locker room with Oklahoma's defense on the field. Their big receiver is on the single side. As you look at what Sam has done here of late, Colin Johnson right here, but there's a safety over the top helping. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Ellinger taking time to the end zone. And three seconds will remain. You know, Oklahoma that time only rushed two people. They were dropping nine guys in coverage and not giving Sam Ellinger anywhere to throw the football. That was a pretty good design and a call defensively by Mike Stoops on that play. So with three seconds remaining, Joshua Rowling, the junior from Madison, Mississippi, will come in. He's just four of nine on the year. Had a really good week of practice, though. Missed the potential game winner at the end of regulation last week. A 42-yard kick at the end of regulation last week. Oklahoma calls their final timeout of the half. But if you're that guy, you have to be happy that your defense got the interception. You move the football down the field in an efficient way and at least give yourself a chance to put some more points on the board before halftime. It was John Bonney who had the interception for Texas. Yeah, he really fooled Baker Mayfield. Good design, showed blitz, peeled off, and did something that nobody's done this year to Baker Mayfield, and that's intercept the pass. Texas defense, their ninth interception. They've returned four of them for touchdowns. 34 yard attempt. As Joshua Rowland looks to close out this first half for the Horns with some momentum, and he puts it through. And what a different second quarter for Texas. 10 unanswered points over the final three minutes and 14 seconds of the first half as we send it back to Adnan Burke in the studio. All right, Tess, thank you. You're watching Dos Equis Tailgate Week. Mayfield, he's going to launch it downfield and into the hands of Jeff Badette. Sooners score it. Anderson on the carry, cuts back inside the five, reaching for the end zone, and in. 15-yard touchdown run. Finally getting rid of it, and Porter into the end zone. Kyle Porter, hook him horns. ESPN.
ESPN College Football presented by PlayStation View as part of Dos Equis Tailgate Week. Oklahoma was up 26 in the Red River Showdown, and in the last three minutes and 14 seconds, Texas was able to cut it in half as Ellinger hit Porter for the touchdown pass and then rolled it at the 34-yard field goal just before we took a break, and I was able to get myself some mighty good barbecue. Good so I am ready and pumped up and all proteined up for this second half. <laughs> Is the Texas offense the way they were in the second quarter? Well, I tell you, they, they made some plays when they needed to, but it was their defense, really, I think, that was the difference because their defense, even though they gave up 342 yards to this explosive Oklahoma offense, they were able to play pretty good on third down, hold yep. the Sooners to two for seven. They got the one turnover, Mayfield's first interception of the season, and that kind of gave them some momentum and, and help their offense out. Now, their defense is right back on the field here to start the third quarter. Well, they could use a stop here, obviously, because we know when Mayfield and his Sooners offense finds their stride, they are lethal. Well, they averaged nine yards of play in the first half. They, they, they stopped themselves. Baker, right back to business, C.D. Lamb. Max protection again. They keep the tight end and the back end. And Mayfield able to stand in a clean pocket and make the nice throw on first down. Lamb is going to have himself a good career. You can already see what he's been able to do as a freshman from Richmond, Texas. And then there's this guy, Trey Sermon. Fighting his way just beyond midfield. The freshman from Georgia who got the start today with Abdul Adams injured. Right back to the counter. The counter tray has been a very effective run play for him. That time they came back to the right. A little too tight end offense. A little power smash mouth formation that time by Oklahoma. Putting Flowers as one tight end and Mark Andrews as the other tight end. There is Adams who left last week's game with an injury after just three carries against Iowa State. Same formation. Two tight ends, two receivers, one back. Second and five. They're going to get a sack of Baker Mayfield. Omenahu. They bring pressure here. They're going to get to Baker Mayfield. They have not been able to get on the ground. They've gotten free rushers at him, but that time Omenahu is able to get to him and get him to the ground and create a negative play. And create a big opportunity for Todd Orlando's defense trying to get off the field. Oklahoma facing a third and 12. Now they're showing a three-man rush. Sermon lowers the shoulder and will have the first down on third and 12. See, Texas substituted expecting pass. They had a nickel or dime defense. Oklahoma kept two tight ends and came right back to the counter trap. Pull the guard, pull the tackle, and they ran smash mouth football on third and long against smaller defenders in a nickel defense and converted. The patience he showed at the early part yeah. of that run and then the power he showed in the last five yards, something special. He's certain. an impressive looking freshman. So a 13-yard run on third and 12. And this time weaving his way through again and giving a little something extra to that Texas defense. 11 more yards for Sermon. Well, and all of a sudden now, Oklahoma's running game up to 124 yards. Again, last year, they ran for 282 yards against the Longhorns. And that just sets up everything else that they want to do in their play-action pass game. So effective on this drive alone. Averaging 9.3 yards per carry on these three. You have to get penetration on that counter play. You can't allow the back to get north and south. Here it is again. That time just two yards as they ran Brown in the jet motion. Jefferson and Locke with the tackle. I think they're actually better running that to the left and pulling Bobby Evans, the right tackle, as opposed to Orlando Brown, the left tackle. Orlando's a better drive blocker off the line of scrimmage, doesn't pull as effectively as Bobby Evans does. Best team in the country in yards per play. 
Today, right at that average. 8.8 yards per play against Texas today. Jefferson up the middle. Mayfield gets away from it. Brown in space as he darts ahead. And Graham finally able to get to him. Just, just that little move by Baker Mayfield, knowing that Jefferson is going to be free up the middle. He didn't panic. He didn't bolt out of the pocket. He just kind of slid to the left a little bit and was able to make a nice soft throw for the completion. That's just a guy who has played a lot of winning football in this offense. Really, ever since he and Lincoln Riley connected before the 2015 season started, their numbers have been prolific together. He is sixth in Big 12 history in total offense, Baker Mayfield, and he's adding to it today. Working his way up that ladder. Whistles blow as they were facing a third and two and a timeout. Oklahoma calls their first time out of the half. It's called Media by the timeout. Sooners. We will take a short break. Lincoln and the boys facing a third and two when we return to Dallas. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating university's general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. And today at Allstate has contributed millions in those scholarship funds. Last time on third down, it was third and 12. Texas had a third down package defense in and they ran it. Sermon gets the first down and a little more down to the 16 yard line for the Sooners. What a nice cut. What a nice jump cut. Watch him get into the hole, plant his right foot and bounce outside. That's what added about five more yards to the play. Good vision by Trey Sermon. There are so many talented freshman backs in the country right now. You know, Swift down at Georgia, but this guy right here, Trey Sermon, is right near the top of the list. He is going to be a force for years to come for Oklahoma. Sprayberry High School. And he has made such a difference on this opening drive of this second half. You know, the one thing you worry about sometimes, Joe, with a freshman back is how is he going to be able to, you know he's okay running the football or he wouldn't be at Oklahoma, but handling pass protections and those other parts of the nuances of playing the position. But he's got a maturity about him and a physicality about him that's And then there's this guy. Touchdown, Mayfield Flowers. Flag is down at the 22. We'll check on that. Well, they're going to call a hold, I think, on Orlando Brown. Holding by number 78 of the defense. offense. It's a 10-yard penalty, and it's still second down. Watch Orlando Brown now. He's going to block down, and right in here, he's just going to grab a bear hug a guy and pull him to the ground right in front of the official. Good job by Maker, Baker Mayfield reading the coverage, but that was a pretty obvious call against Orlando Brown. Brown, who this week was named to ESPN.com's midseason All-American team, 6'8", 345. Penalties. Fourth penalty on the Oklahoma offense today, Todd. Yeah, six all together. The yardage adding up. Second and 20. Mayfield should have been picked off by Hager. I don't know who Baker was throwing this to. I don't know if this was the son or what, but he threw this right to Hager. Hager was closer. I guess he saw the crossing route, but he did not see Hager, and that was an opportunity by the wayside there for Texas's defense. Could have been their second interception of the ball game. And you see those shadows you referenced could have been the sun as that sun starts to set and press over the west side of the Grand Cotton Bowl. You can see it two thirds of the way across the field. Third and 20. Pressure in the B gap. They pick it up. Mayfield steps up. Gonna try to tuck and run and just make the most of it. Taken down by Wheeler. Let's go to Holly. Well, you referenced those shadows on the field. It is a very odd look right now because half the field and hash marks are in shadow, the other half in sunshine. I did use a little cool thermometer gadget that I can point at the field. It is 10 degrees cooler on the Texas sideline than the OU sideline right now, so we'll see if that impacts their fatigue down the stretch. We'll watch for that. You know, the one guy I would wonder about that more than anybody is Trey Sermon. 
because of the injury to Abdul Adams. Now we've seen Rodney Anderson as well. Cyber as his day stays perfect. And Oklahoma pushes their lead to 13. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Dos Equis. Stay thirsty, enjoy responsibly. And Ford, going further so you can. Dos Equis tailgate week, and when you're here at the State Fair of Texas, Boy, can you eat your way through the weekend, as we have done, most of the crew has done. You get everything from, we saw some deep fried Fruit Loops there, the turkey legs, the surf and turf and tater boat. You and I had a little deep fried s'mores yesterday. Yeah. And the smells too. I mean, even if you're not eating, just walking out of the truck, walking out of the booth, the smell in the air of the food is amazing. Cyber, his third field goal moments ago, and now to kick away. Remember, Porter had a 41 yard return last time there. And Cyber's going to say, You will get no return this time out of the back of the end zone. That's that time of the year when things get a little kooky in college football. Saw the upsets last night. But keep in mind, folks, the last three years, the college football playoff era, the eventual national champion, they all had a loss. In fact, a home loss Ohio State, Virginia Tech. Alabama lost to Ole Miss, and last year it was Clemson with that loss at home to Pitt Top. Yeah, and, it, and it's not necessarily losing to a ranked opponent. It's losing to a team that you're expected to beat. A disappointing loss, very similar to the experience that Oklahoma had last week against Iowa State. That's why the sense of urgency with this Sooner football team today. Here's to Neil Carter as he cuts back for a gain of two, huh? Well, as the Texas players came out of the tunnel at halftime, some of the guys coming down the ramp said, we ain't giving up. Tom Herman said, I love our tenacity. We've done a good job holding the number one offense in the country to field goals. He likes that tenacity. Well, they really showed that and learned a lot about themselves out at USC in that overtime game, incomplete there, as it was Okoronkwo who got a piece of it up at the line. The pass defense the last two weeks has been the real problem area for Oklahoma. Not so much today. 141 yards passing for Texas. And on third downs, it's been a little bit of a struggle as well. Four of nine for the Longhorn. Third down and eight. Sam Ellinger. First down, Chris Warren. And Texas will move the chains. Chris Warren scored a touchdown last week against Kansas State on a similar route, leaking out of the backfield, and Oklahoma just lost track of him. Good design in the play, and Chris Warren shows his value out of the backfield as well. 17-yard reception on third and eight. Ellinger is going to set up shop. He wanted to go deep to Colin Johnson, but Johnson was double covered. This is the same play they opened the game last week against Kansas State. It was wide open, and he made a bad throw, and it was intercepted. That time, Oklahoma had Colin Johnson completely covered, and he had to throw the football away. He was intercepted on the first play of the game last week and went on the pass for 380 yards. Yeah, didn't let it affect him too bad. Second and ten. Nothing happening much there as you try to go back inside the Hemphill maps. Third and eight. Sooners imploring their defense. Fans roaring for a stop. And you got to block 31. He's the guy you got to take care of right here. See if the back helps on him on his way out into the route. Defense does their job. Flag, late flag, flag. coming late there. Very late flag. And Motley can't believe it. He had the coverage on Leonard. Now, Oklahoma has been playing tight coverage the whole game. 
If it's holding, it's going to be a first down. Holding by number 11 of the defense. It's a 10 yard penalty and an automatic first down. A lot of bump and run coverage, tight single coverage, not afraid of getting beat deep. But watch the grab right there. Both hands all over the intended receiver. He let go, but not before the flag came out. The flag came late, but the penalty was seen. First down, Texas just inside the 45. Penalties have really hurt Oklahoma. Here's Porter, and he is met and ridden down that time as Lampkin got to him as it over Ronquo. Texas, one penalty for five yards. Oklahoma, seven penalties for 69 yards, but it's also the, the times when the penalties have happened. They've been critical times. And right now, their best pass rusher is still on the field. So the concern with Lincoln Riley is the medical team has gone on to see Obo Okoronkwo. Watch the right side of your screen. Just following this run play down the line. Not sure what happened. Up on his knees right now, though, so that's a pretty good sign. Leads the Sooners in sacks and tackles for loss. Came into this weekend leading the Big 12 with five sacks. I think he might have got something through the face mask. And that's what he's signaling. Oh, well, his own guy. Friendly fire yeah, there. Friendly fire. His own guy got him. Looks like Devontae Lampkin. <laughs> He's already laughing about it. <laughs> this guy's going to hear about it when they watch film. Big Devontae Lampkin goes 6'4", 335. So, Bronco will head out on second and eight. And Mark Jackson, four-star recruit from San Antonio, will step into that edge spot. Sam Ellinger in the backfield with Warren, second and eight. Pitch to Warren. It's run down by Motley. Yeah, nice play by Motley over there. Maintaining leverage, fighting off the block, and keeping that to be a pretty minimal gain on second down. First time that Texas has shown option. Big third down play right now, and Okoronkwo on the sideline. It's a play situation Texas needs to try to capitalize on. Third and four. Pressure right up the middle against Ellinger. Able to get it to Warren. Warren with plenty of green grass in front of him for another first down. And there's going to be a late hit on the quarterback at the end of the play. Another costly penalty on Oklahoma. Double inside blitz. It's a free release for the back, the and nobody foul. picks him up. Roughing the passer on number 14 of the defense. 15-yard penalty and a first down. The double inside blitz, you're expecting the back to stay in the block, but he's on a free release. Ellinger gets him the ball quickly. And then the late hit after the ball is thrown, right up in the head area. Wasn't violent, but it was unnecessary. And another costly, timely penalty against the Sooners. Ellinger, quarterback run. Doesn't shy away from contact. I'll tell you, Warren has played a big role here on this drive. That was his second and third down catch on this drive. Of course, penalties always a factor. Texas, only one penalty today. Oklahoma, eight. And again, it's, it, obviously the number is stark contrast to Texas, but it's the, the time that the penalties are happening and the situation are, are just as important. Okoronkwo back out there. As Carter's now the running back, they're going to run that option again. This time he keeps, does Ellinger, and he's inside the five-yard line. A gain of four. Texas was able to carve into that lead in the first half, score ten points to keep it close, trying to keep it close again here. 
with a big third down and three play. Your quarterback as a runner is always a threat in this part of the field. Third and three. Ellinger again. See where they mark this ball here. Is he sitting on a first and goal? He's 230 pounds. And he, like you said, he does not shy away from contact and he does not slide. He is going head and shoulder first every time he runs the football. The true freshman has his team knocking on the door now. First and goal, Horns. Carter trying to fight his way for something met by Kenneth Mann. Now Carter is the flashier back. Chris Warren's probably going to come in now. Yep, here he comes. He's the bigger back at 250 pounds, scored the game-winning two-yard touchdown in double overtime last week against Kansas State. 13th play of the drive, second and goal. Trying to give him a little push, and it helps. He did it last week. He did it again. Sam Ellinger, after Warren was stacked up, said, let me be the plow here. You're not allowed to pull a guy, but you can push a guy. Unbelievable. He did it two weeks in a row. It was a well-managed drive. Penalties helped as well. But they were three for three on third down conversions. And Texas is closing in to Oklahoma. Chris Warren at 250 pounds with a 230-pound freight train giving him a hand from behind. And we got ourselves a ball game with the rookie coach, Tom Herman, in the Red River. AT&T Red River Showdown on ESPN. And Texas is fighting as they have fought their way back to make this 23-17. Sutton back deep for the Sooners and a big move through the back of the end zone. Chris Warren offers up our Capital One pivotal performance time. Well, he's only got nine yards on four rushes, but on that last scoring drive, he was the guy. Third down and eight. Pass out of the backfield, complete for 17 yards and another set of downs. Then later, third and five, another throw and completion for 15 yards. A couple of Sam Ellinger runs, got him down, and then the big fella with a little help Got it in the end zone in Texas within six now. But Chris Warren and Sam Ellinger teamed up beautifully on that drive. That's with four and a half minutes to play in the first. What has happened subsequent to that marker? Texas has found momentum. Ellinger has got that moxie. Defense has had a stop or two. But they're going to need to play well against Baker in this bunch. And they do. Just run into the ball is Malik Jefferson and Hager. Same counter tray play that Oklahoma has run a lot today. That time, Anderson tried to cut it back inside, and Jefferson was waiting for him. Texas is trying to run on some defensive substitution, yeah. as they do. Well, as long as Oklahoma substitutes, the, the referees will hold action up to allow Texas or the defense to substitute as well. And big Puna Ford makes his way onto the field for second and eight. Here's Mayfield. Gets away. Runs and should have a first down. Time and time again, Mayfield somehow survives. You just don't know how he does it. It's like he's got eyes in the back of his head. He knows where the pressure's coming from. And he's just a hard guy to get onto the ground. Third down and short instead of third down and very long. 
if they'd have got the sack. Omenahu couldn't tackle him. Third and one. Oklahoma is 0 for 2 on third and ones today. And that'll change here. As Trey Sermon will give them the first down. I just think that that Baker Mayfield and, and this offense, they need to try to throw the ball vertically. They have not really tried to challenge this Texas defense down the field so much here. They've got a couple speed guys. See if they can stretch the defense a little bit. Two backs in the backfield right now. Sermon and Anderson in the backfield. As he will get it quickly to Sermon, trying to pick up a block. Met. Ooh, and then finally tough. brought down by Locke and Boyd. But it takes every one of those Texas burnt orange defenders to get to Sermon. This kid is physical now. 220 pounds. And you better bring a load if you want to get this guy on the ground. And you better wrap up when you get there as well. 86 yards rushing and that out of the backfield seventh different receiver that Baker Mayfield has gotten the ball to today second that, and three here's that two tight end look again the power look 153 yards rushing in the ball game for Oklahoma right now locked up on the inside that time as Malcolm Roach came around to make the tackle the reason Texas is still in this game defensively is even though they've given up a lot of yards, it's at, it's up to 427 now. You got to play well in critical spots. Third down, red zone, and you got to force a turnover or two. And Texas has been able to do well in third down and the red zones, and they have the one interception. Third and three. To be a penalty there. No doubt about it. Well, Dimitri Flowers was in the area. Well, that would be the only way, but they came in hard on Mayfield. And Mayfield is holding his arm, too, at the end of the play. It was Brandon Jones who came in on him, and we got something brewing down here at the 10 yard line. Roach is right in the mix of it. Mayfield is slow to get off yeah. the field on the other end. He took a hit right into the midsection in the arm. I actually thought that Brandon Jones was offside. He was blitzing from the edge. And when the guy went in motion, he came off the edge. I thought he came early. And he's the guy that put the hit on Mayfield. Here's what happened. So watch Brandon Jones, see if he jumps early. Nobody gets a hand on him, and he is on Mayfield right away. That was the initial hit, and then Mayfield tried to throw it and got hit over the top as he was getting rid of the ball. That was Gerald Wilbon that hit him at the end. There is no intentional grounding. The ball was thrown toward number 32. So he wasn't outside the tackle box, but there was a receiver, they're saying, in the general area of where he was throwing. And, and, I think he misspoke. Right. I think he meant 36, Dimitri Flowers. Yeah, Flowers was in the area, but he took a, a hit, and it was really the second hit over the top that, that affected him. And now Kyler Murray, the transfer from Texas A&M, played his high school football at Allen, Texas, three state championships. He's warming up on the sideline. As Cyber will come in to punt away. And mark that down. 110 left in the third, and the big hit on Baker Mayfield. Empill maps back to return the Cyber punt. Short, high and short. Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, things just got wild down here. Oklahoma players were upset about the hard hit on Baker Mayfield. Things got heated. Well, the Texas fans loved it. It went wild down here. The OU players have been gesturing to their fans, hey, match that energy. In the midst of all this, Kyler Murray, who had been peripherally kind of listening in on the game, not that actively involved, all of a sudden is like, oh, wow, I got to get warmed up and get ready to go in this ballgame right now. His eyes are as big as saucers over here on the sideline. Baker doesn't look great. That was a 305 
with the full force of his weight on Baker Mayfield's neck and shoulder area at the end of that play. Carter met by Gallimore. Now the Oklahoma defense trying to rise up in response to what happened to their quarterback. No gain on first down. Just listen to this wall of sound here from the Cotton Bowl and painted crimson and cream. Trying to shake free, but Lincoln right on top of him. <laughs> Pretty good agility by the 335 pounder. And he's running mirror drill with the quarterback and not letting him get away. The ball carrier was in the pocket, so there is no horse collar tackle. We got ourselves a fun one here in Big D. A six point game. Baker Mayfield hurt moments ago. Texas trying to find that momentum they just had. And a whole lot of rivalry in the Red River. Fourth quarter's ahead. fourth quarter here in Dallas the Good. grand tradition of the Red River showdown Joe Tessitore Todd Blackledge Holly Rowe with you Ellinger good decision to run came up a little bit short but that's okay if you're Tom Herman you are right back in this game it's a one possession game punt the football and play a little field position here and see how healthy Baker Mayfield really is when it comes to throwing the football Dixon's had a nice day. See if he can come up with a big one here. And he does. And can they pin them? How about it, Michael Dixon? 62-yard punt just when they needed it most. And here's Baker Mayfield. He was injured. Texas blitz. They got to him. They blew the play up. And at the end of the play, they hit right there the injury to the right shoulder now the, the good thing I will say when I was watching him warm up and try to throw he was not grimacing when he was throwing the football and here he comes to run the offense so the ball is just cresting up against the two yard line but that is the Oklahoma side of the Cotton Bowl they split the tickets right down the 50 yard line the only thing I would worry now about Baker Mayfield, he looks like he can throw it, but can he take another hit on that shoulder? See if he can get them some breathing room here. Sermon, Matt, trying to fight his way forward. As it was Wheeler and Jefferson, and this Texas defense just seems a little saltier. The decision to play field position looks to be the right one for Texas, but can they keep them pinned down? They weren't able to do it earlier in the ball game. But so what is go testing that shoulder on the sidelines now from his own end zone? Mayfield, second and ten. Ball is tipped and falls incomplete off the hands of me. That's just Baker not really setting his feet. He left the pocket a little bit, and he didn't have good footwork in the in the pocket, and he didn't make an accurate throw. But the arm looked okay throwing it. His footwork was bad. 
And that should at least give him confidence that his arm is okay to make a throw here on third down. Sermon met, driven back by Roach. Big punt moments ago. Defense does their job, and Texas will be in good shape. Sermon driven back at the end of that play is slow to get up in the end zone. Sermon looks to be favoring his right shoulder or right wrist at the end of this play. Beautiful form tackle by Malcolm Roach. Wrap up and finish. Now Austin Seibert with his heels pinned towards that back of the end zone. Not much wiggle room here as Hemphill Maps is at midfield. Had a 91-yard touchdown punt return in the opening game against Maryland. Very dangerous. Turning this ball over. Well struck by Seibert all the way back as Hemphill going up to retreating inside the 30. Wow, what he great set cover. up shot at midfield. He ended with coverage getting him at the 29. Trey Brown, the backup corner on punt coverage. Excellent work here by special teams. The freshman from Tulsa with a great play. I'm out Dan Burke with this PlayStation View multi view. We've got some drama over on ESPN2. The Cats right now leading the Terps 27 to 21 and Georgia Tech and Miami. Mother Nature not complying. Just a two point game right now early in the fourth on ABC. Back to Joe and Todd. Thank you Adnan. Fourth quarter 1243 to play. Sam Ellinger. Downfield. Right into his arms to the outside. Little stop and go. It fooled. Harnell Motley wants the route on the outside. Stop, fake, and go. And Motley bit. They've been in tight man to man coverage the entire game. And that time, the stop and go worked beautifully for Texas. 42 yard reception. Chris Warren trying to get those pads down for a gain of two. Well, we have seen some good action. We've seen two punters bail their team out completely. And now the biggest pass play of the game for Texas. Texas has to sub because one of the linemen, the starting right tackle, Kerstetter, lost his shoe. So a new right tackle in on this play, Tristan Nicholson, number 75. Ellinger trying to extend the play now. Okoronkwo is chasing, and he's going to throw it away as Murray was also getting involved in tracking the freshman. Okoronkwo was working on the substitute tackle in on that play. Now, a couple of possessions ago on the sideline during a timeout, I saw the trainers working on Okoronkwo. Looked like he had some cramps in his legs. So whether he has the the full speed to go here the rest of the fourth quarter, that'll be yet to be seen. And he has been a force rushing the passer. Third and eight. As Texas is marching right into the side with all those Sooners fans. Ellinger gonna test that right side again, but couldn't connect with Colin Johnson. You know, when you play cornerback, particularly in a league like this, you better have supreme confidence and short-term memory loss. This is the same guy who got beat on a long play, Motley, that time, step for step with Colin Johnson. Pass interference by number 13 of the offense. The penalty is declined. It's fourth down. was on Gerard Hurd. He was not the intended receiver. The ball was thrown down the field. Now this is interesting here because obviously fourth down if you decline but you're in. They're going to keep it at fourth and eight here from the 27. 
Alan Johnson, their main receiver, only one catch for three yards in the ball game so far. Six foot six, big target. Can't get him the ball. Ellinger. Chase down, has got to get rid of it, and incomplete. Caleb Kelly is the guy who brought the pressure. Looped all the way around. Caleb Kelly lined up as an inside linebacker. He's right here, and he's going to loop all the way around. Through the ball beyond the neutral zone. No, in, no intentional grounding. First down. Media timeout. So a turnover on downs as they choose not to try the field goal. Oklahoma back out there when we return. ESPN College Football is presented by PlayStation View. Watch the biggest moments in sports. Try it free today. Well, you win the Red River Showdown and you get the Golden Hat Trophy. I've been doing it since 1941 that way the State Fair of Texas donated the golden hat back then Baker Mayfield knows what it's like to win that 11 26 remaining until the next golden hat is handed out as Mayfield who was injured late in the third quarter back out there with the Sooners offense just doing his thing Mayfield as he looks for Sermon and gets it complete you know football is a game of inches I want to go back to the first play of the last Texas possession they go for the stop and go if this ball is thrown a little bit more inside Duvernay who has great speed catches it in stride and it's a touchdown and Texas is leading he throws them out of bounds and as it turns out Texas ends up turning it over on downs in Oklahoma territory for the second time tonight when they could have attempted a 44 yard yeah. field goal and closed this game to three was still a lot of time to play Mayfield quick strike was knocked away that time as he was trying to get it to Andrews but Jones defended it Jones is the guy that came in and had the big hit on Mayfield at the end of the third big play right here for the Texas defense third down and seven third down and eight Oklahoma 5 of 13 on third down. Looks like more than six to me. Will Texas elect to go after him? Third and six. Incomplete. Same guy. Mark Andrews has been shut out since the first quarter he's been looking his way but hasn't been able to connect same guy in coverage brandon jones the safety is able to get a hand on the football andrews a big target in the middle of the field and brandon jones with his left hand times it perfectly and you could see the right hand was not engaged that was excellent play by the safety jones second straight three and out for oklahoma reggie hemphill maps Back to return the cyber punt. Reggie spins by the first would be tackler and then out to the 27. Now, does the freshman have it in him? Sam Ellinger back out there with Texas when we return to Dallas. I'm Adam Amberg back in our college football studios with an update on Auburn and LSU. Tigers are back in this one thanks to DJ Chark. He's returned 10 punts this year. Two of them have gone for touchdowns. Nice percentage. LSU's down by two, under six to go. Back to Joe and Todd. The Tigers hanging around even with Kerryon Johnson having another big day. He's got over 150 yards rushing today for Auburn. 10-25 to play here. Just a six-point margin in the Red River rivalry. Ellinger, maybe a yard there. You know, this Oklahoma defense much maligned the last two weeks with their pass defense, but they have been outstanding today in negating the effectiveness of the two best receivers for Texas. Colin Johnson, Reggie Hemphill, Maps combined 50 catches coming in today. Nothing, no production from either one of them, and that's a credit 
to the Oklahoma defense. Second and nine, Ellinger. One-handed catch by Hemphill Maps, and then trying to shoulder his way towards that line to me. It's going to be third and short for Texas. Good concentration by Hemphill Maps, knowing that contact's probably coming soon. Does a nice job corralling that and then protecting the football at the end of the play. Ellinger. First down and more for Texas, and then a juke out to midfield. As he was led by Chris Warren, 15-yard run for Ellinger. He doesn't juke much, but he juked correctly on this one. Look at the safety. He thinks he's going to have to bow up and make a tackle, and Ellinger sidesteps him. Okoronkwo couldn't get him. Okoronkwo does, Okoronkwo does not have the same burst that he had earlier in the game. He got pressure, and he was there, but he doesn't look as, as explosive as he did earlier in the ballgame. At this point, if you're Sam Ellinger, no negative plays. You have to throw it away, throw it away. Second and 10 is a lot better than second and 15. They only bring four after him. He's going to launch it downfield, and that was never going to have a chance as Hemphill Maps was nowhere near it. Holly? Well, the starting running back for the Texas Longhorns, Kyle Porter, is out for the game with a chest injury. Guys, that leaves Chris Warren the third to be the primary running back with Sam Ellinger running like he is. They may not need him. He has been something, that moxie that people talk about. That it factor in the face of adversity in a game like this. Third and ten. Oklahoma in a dime defense. Ellinger downfield and into the hands of Reggie Hemphill Maps. 22 yard reception. A long throw. Running on the field was a catch inbound. From the left hash to the right sideline, does he get one foot in? I think he does. Secure catch, right foot in. What a throw and what a catch by the guy that we started this possession by saying has been a non factor. Two big catches in this drive. And that is DJ Ward starting defensive end for Oklahoma. Who is still down after that play. One of the older, more veteran leaders of this Oklahoma defense. Interesting also on that third down and 10 play, Okoronkwo was on the sideline. They substituted him for third down on that play to give him a rest. And Sam Ellinger was able to hang in the pocket and make that deep throw across the field. Okoronkwo is one of the best edge rushers in the country. I, Ward I, is up and walking off. And he was dealing with cramps was Okoronkwo earlier. Holly made a great point about the way the sun sets here at the stadium being on the home side compared to the visitor's side as Oklahoma has spent majority of the time still the shadow has not reached their team over there and she says a 10 degree difference Sam Ellinger came up big moments ago with the 22 yard pass play to Hemphill Maps. Chris Warren in the game he has not been much of a factor in the run game but he sure has been in the pass game. They were looking for him again. Instead, he goes to Brewer inside the 20. And inside the 10. And Texas is going to have first and goal. This is a great read by Ellinger. Because I think they might have been looking downfield first to the back. And he comes off to the tight end for a big time play. Here he is right here. Now watch, he's going to sell this. He's going to sit in here and block and release late. Meanwhile, the back is going to go down the sideline, and I think Ellinger was looking to the back 
Foreman first and came off to the tight end. Beautiful execution by Sam Ellinger. You can see the collision there. And that was Khalil Houghton from Junior from Waco. It was the intended to by the training staff there after the contact was made at the end of that play. This is a battle. I mean, these two teams are going at each other. And we, we've seen some good football games, some physical games, but this is this is a war of attrition right now. These two teams are going at each other. Nobody is backing down, and the resiliency that both of these teams is showing is, is incredible. And I just like the way things really set up this week of one team that's a college football playoff trajectory. Right. They take the upset loss, but they know, hey, everybody takes the one loss in this playoff era. We got everything right in front of us. But then there's that rival team that feels the momentum. They're cresting at the right time. They're finding their confidence. And now it meets up today here. And not only that, they're 2-0 and in this league. And so a win today that would put them at 3-0 and in the Big 12, it would be a huge step for the Texas football team. Fifth so, consecutive year that Texas has entered this rivalry game unranked, and they won two of the last four. But there's something a little different about this Texas team with Tom Herman and the defensive coordinator, Todd Orlando. The last time Texas got this deep in Oklahoma territory, it was a couple of runs, designed runs, by the quarterback, Sam Ellinger. Let's see what Oklahoma does to defend that on this possession. So here we go, first and goal. Ellinger to pass. Now he's going to tuck. Ellinger into the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. point to take the lead. They've come all the way back. Sam Ellinger, born and raised for moments like this. Texas through and through, the true freshman. Both his parents went to UT, a lifelong fan. Committed early, his mom Jenna here. She lost her husband Ross, and as a little boy, she knew Sam was all about hook'em. Look at this scene on the Texas sideline. ESPN College Football presented by PlayStation View, part of Dos Equis Tailgate Week. How good is this? Red River showdown. Two thirds of the fourth quarter left, though. A lot of time for Baker Mayfield in the soon. Here's Sutton on the return. And he is met just beyond the 20. I want to look at the touchdown. I want to show you the football instincts of Ellinger. There's going to be a motion man who's going to go out for a route, and the tight end is going out for a route. Ellinger is going to roll to his right with the idea of throwing back to the left. But it's not there. Now, the decision right here, if he throws it, he's got linemen downfield blocking. It would have been a penalty. He keeps it, he picks up the blocks, and he turns it into a touchdown. That's just football instincts and savvy by a kid who was playing high school ball last year. Since they trailed early on, look at what Texas has done. Roaring back, 24 points and 258 yards. Oklahoma's six. Sermon back in the game as well. That's him right here. That's good news for Oklahoma. Mayfield and Sermon both shaken up in this game. Both back out there. Some pressure right up the middle from Jefferson. And a quick catch to Mark Andrews. Out to the 30. Gain of eight. Baker Mayfield. It's been so dynamic in recent years. I mean, who else would you want in this situation? Nobody. There's maybe nobody in the country. He's the ultimate gamer. 
as confident as could be. But with that upset loss last week, it is do or die now for playoff hopes for Oklahoma and a good run from Rodney Anderson. Texas has done a much better job defending the run this year than a year ago. But Oklahoma still with pretty good balance. Of course, that guy would be pretty good in this situation, too. Now Sam Darnold, USC, will be on ABC tonight against a Utah team. Got the best of them last year, did the Utes. Coming up on seven minutes to play. Unranked Texas up a point on 12th ranked Oklahoma. Here's Mayfield. Heisman hopeful. Wide open and complete. Mark Andrews. Baker Mayfield does it. 59 yards to Andrews. Of confusion in the back end of that Texas secondary. Brandon Jones, who has made some big time plays that time, has that deer in the headlights look on that play. And they're going to keep the offense on the field here, as right now the margin is five. So looking to make it seven with the two point. Conversion. We were just talking about who would you rather have? Who was built for those moments? Number six. And here he is looking for two more. Same guy. No, nope. foot was out. Great idea. Throw it to your biggest receiver at the back of the end zone and let him go up and catch it with height. Put the ball out. Lincoln Riley head the coach. The on the field as the pass was caught and out of bounds. And the play caller. And he dialed one up. He said, let's look for the big target streaking down the outside. Mark Andrews, 59-yard touchdown. Boomer Sooner back in front. I'm going to go back to the Oklahoma touchdown. We're going to have a combination route, and Andrews is going to go out to the outside. The guy who is going to get in a bind is that safety right there. Watch Brandon Jones go with the inside route and let go of Mark Jones on the outside, or Mark Andrews, and an easy touchdown and read by Baker Mayfield. Baker getting more attention on the sideline to that right shoulder. He had to kind of cut that one loose to get it to Andrews. Seibert's going to muscle this ball to the back of the end zone again. You can kick off your week six. Sunday NFL countdown is going to start at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. And Randy Moss is going to rank the best catches from today's college football action. That's you got Moss. And Desmond's joining countdown. Desmond Howard is going to take a trip to KC to talk to Tyreek Hill. And then Colts and Titans coming your way with Monday Night Football. And coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6 Eastern on ESPN. A lot of time left in the football game here. There's no question about that. We said that about Baker Mayfield. Same thing for Sam Ellinger. Even this possession is not a do-or-die possession. One of the reasons Texas is still in this football game is they have played a clean game. No turnovers and only one penalty in the game so far. One quarterback has made 39 starts. This one is just his fourth. Ellinger, he has grown up today, though. Extending near side and then tucks. And he'll pick up three yards there. Texas with 239 yards passing in the ball game. That number is way down from where they were a week ago, and also where Oklahoma's pass defense has been the last two weeks. Much more sound fundamentally in their pass defense in the ball game tonight. Another empty look here, second and seven. Flag is down as Okoronkwo went down. Crowd wanting intentional grounding, but because he was out of the tackle box, you can throw it. But Okoronkwo drew the holding penalty. 
Good one on one pass rush that time. And they flipped him back and forth from side to side. This time working on the true freshman, Derek Kerstetter. Little discussion here. He's outside the tackle box and it crosses the line Holding of scrimmage. by number 68 of the offense. Roughing the passer by number 57 of the defense. The penalty's offset. Oh, wow. Replay second down. Roughing the passer came in late when they threw the bean bag there. Oh, come on. You can't call this. That's a fake job by Allen. He's 230-pound quarterback. Hey, and Bill Lamonti, our rules expert. Bill, Come what do you on. see there? In this game, that hit, I'd leave it alone. I think you can't even use the word hit there. Trying to set up the screen, and they do so. Here's Chris Warren. Their screen game has been really effective, and there's another late flag. This... This might be a late block after the play was over downfield by one of the Texas offensive linemen. Personal foul, illegal low block by number 56 of the offense. That's the center, Zach Shackelford, who's downfield trying to block. There's the, the low block at the top of the screen. That kind of a block is okay around the line of scrimmage. Just not downfield like that. That's a spot foul. So they're going to mark the ball back at the 28. I just mentioned Texas playing a clean game. That was a key penalty and a very unnecessary penalty. Two penalties now on this possession. Would have been first down at the 43. Instead, we've got a second and seven now. Ellinger getting away from the pressure, asking for a block downfield, getting it from Johnson, his receiver, and moving the chains for the horns. Did a nice job of reading the block of Kerstetter on Okoronkwo. Watch Okoronkwo go inside, and Sam Ellinger saw that he had the outside to scramble. Take advantage of the block, get another block by your wide receiver, and pick up the first down. Five and a half minutes to play. Oklahoma trying to stay alive for the college football playoff. No wiggle room after the loss last week. Ellinger to pass. Plenty of time. Now spins away from Okoronkwo. And again will tuck and run. And he is ridden down after a gain of about two and a half yards. Ellinger slow to get up at the end of this play. He is still down. Right there among his teammates and coaches. He landed hard on his right shoulder, it appears, as well, at the end of that play. Could have also landed on his head. You know, he's lowered his shoulder, he's run hard. That time, he's running out of bounds, going for the sideline. Boom, oh, His yep. head slammed down yeah. at the end of the play as Freshman Kenneth Murphy for Oklahoma made the tackle. You saw Ellinger's head slam down. Clean tackle, but clearly that head banged off the ground. It's his mom, Jenna. As he's sitting up, and that's always a great sign, and now he's going to rise to his feet. Shane Bouchelle taking snaps. He was the starter against Maryland in the opener. Threw for 375 yards and a couple touchdowns. Also started the Iowa State game. So it's not like they're going to, a, to an untested backup at this point, Joe. The well-seasoned sophomore, Shane Bouchelle. And you know the backstory with him. He comes from a family filled with Oklahoma folks. His brother Garrett was a walk-on baseball player at Oklahoma. In fact, was the Big 12 Freshman of the Year about eight years ago. His sister Amber, his sister-in-law, they went to OU. And he steps into the midst of this heated game now as the clock is ticking down under five minutes in a pressure city. A gap pressure, and he's going to pass on his first play in the game. Shane Bouchelle. 
will now have to tuck and run and get to midfield. It'll be third down from there. Two things. Number one, he doesn't offer the same dual threat capability that Ellinger does. And he's battled shoulder and ankle injuries through the first part of this season. But he is a very accurate passer. Maybe even more so when it comes to that than Sam Ellinger. Big play right here on third down. Third and six for Shane Bouchelle. Here's Warren. Stop. Settled. Got it. Boy, has this guy been clutch coming out of the backfield. Stayed off of a knee, showed balance on the sideline, and able to convert the first down. What great athleticism from Warren. And now just four minutes to play. Ellinger out of the game. Shane Bouchel in. Nobody's guarding Colin Johnson right now. Now they get out there. Gets it complete. This is Hurd inside the 40. Plenty of time for Shane Bouchel. Five point game, so they've got to look to get the ball to the end zone. Field goal won't help them here. Back and forth, these two teams have gone this entire second half. Baker Mayfield was sensational in giving Oklahoma the lead moments ago with a big strike. Sooners trying to stay alive for the college football playoff. Texas looking for the upset. Bouchelle on second and seven. Wide open in the middle for another Texas first down as he runs ahead. Eight yards from Shane Bouchelle. Knew what he needed for the first down. Got beyond the marker and then slid. And that guy walks back in, <laughs> but Shane's moving him down the field. Under three minutes to play. Bouchelle again. Sack nearly lost yeah. the ball as D.J. Ward was crashing in on him. And Tom Herman wants to call a timeout. Had a lot of momentum, a lot of forward progress Texas with their offense. And a nice big play by D.J. Ward working on the left tackle. Knocks that arm away and almost knocked the ball out of Shane Bouchelle's arms as well. Let's check in with that man. All right, Tess, thank you very much. Jalen Hurts, one of four qualified FBS quarterbacks without an interception this season. Alabama getting set for Arkansas. Arkansas hasn't beaten the Crimson Tide since 2006. They haven't won in Tuscaloosa since 2003, just under 20 minutes away from that. And LSU and Auburn is a final. Jared Stidham had just six passing yards in the second half. Top 10 Auburn teams fall to 0-4 in Baton Rouge. Great win for Coach Ed Orgeron. Joe, back to you. Meanwhile, a five-point margin here would have been just a two-point game if they were able to get the field goal that they passed on earlier in the fourth. Meanwhile, Ellinger and Herman discussing things on the sidelines, and Ellinger is back in there. Second and 17, that was moments ago. Then they called the timeout. Right. Now, right now, Sam, if you, what you're thinking of if you're the quarterback here, you don't have to get it all back in one play. Because this is four down territory. So you can chip away at this second down and long. You just can't go backwards anymore. Took the hit on the sideline. Bouchelle came in, marched him a bit, and now back to the freshman Ellinger. As there was some motion up front. Took too long at the line of scrimmage, Joe. You know, those offensive linemen, they're up there. They're trying to hold their water. Full start by number 51 of the offense. The five-yard penalty, and it's still second down. That's Terrell Cooney, who's playing right guard. Oklahoma is moving and jumping and shifting. And those guys are up there ready to block. Back them up a little bit more. Got to get to the 21-yard line. Second and 22. Pick up off the rock wall off the edge. Ellinger, here he goes as he makes his way to the 34 yard line. Nine yard run by Sam Ellinger. Get some of it back. Again, four down territory. You know, if you had 
five minutes and 30 seconds. Maybe you could try to set up a field goal and hope your defense gets one more stop because you've got a couple timeouts. But with two minutes and 20 seconds and the clock running, you've got to try to get the ball to the end zone on this drive. Third and 13. Sprinting left. Looking to extend. And that was beyond the reach that time of Duvernay. It's really hard for a right-handed quarterback to get flushed to the left. Sometimes defenses do that by design. Flush a guy to the left because when your body's moving that way, if you can't get your shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, it's very hard to throw accurately. So here we go, folks. Fourth and 13. And Oklahoma, hold on. Can Texas make some magic? I think Oklahoma will rush three, four at the most, and drop into coverage and try to keep everything in front. Ellinger escapes Okoronko. Flag is down as he keeps backing up. It has been that kind of a day from start to finish. Holding by number 68 of the offense. The is Turnover on downs. Well, it was right up here. Here's where the hold happens. You're going to watch Kerstretter get his arm inside. He's going to hook under it right there is where the holding comes. And it didn't matter because Ellinger had nowhere to go with the football. Okoronkwo has given everything he has and he is out of juice. As Parker is trying to hydrate as he was laying down in the end zone. It is hot under the Texas sun all day. And it is even hotter with the action on the field. And that was the third time that Texas turned over the ball on downs in Oklahoma territory. Texas has two timeouts. They'll have a chance if they get a couple quick stops to get the ball back one more time. Each timeout remaining eliminates the opportunity for 40 seconds to come off the clock for the opposition. The way this Texas defense stepped up in the second half and then the gut shown by Baker Mayfield after he took the big hit to launch it to Andrews. College football is about moments. Heisman campaigns, all about moments. And Baker Mayfield had one today here in the Red River Showdown. They've run the counter out of this formation a lot. Zone play here. Here's Sermon. He started off so well today, and he will try to bring this thing home for Oklahoma. They're going to let the clock go on this first down play and call timeout on second and third down. On the other side, Oklahoma will use as much of the clock as they can. Let that play clock go as far down as you can before snapping the football. That's what they're playing for. The golden hat. Lincoln Riley and Tom Herman, first year head coaches. First time we've had that since 1947 in this American Classic. That was Blair Cherry and Bud Wilkinson all those years ago. And now Sermon tackled, so it is time to utilize the timeout. Texas calls their second timeout of the half. Oh, Baker Mayfield. 30-second timeout. We know he's a gamer. We know he's a competitor. We saw some toughness tonight, too, because he takes a heck of a hit at the end of the play. 300-pounder landing on that shoulder. He goes out. He gets checked. He tries to throw on the sideline. He's obviously not 100%. Gets looked at, gets his helmet back, and then when he has to really crank one, he does to Mark Andrews. Beautiful throw in stride for the go-ahead touchdown. You talk about moments. This has been a Baker Mayfield moment. 
his season. He did throw an interception today for the first time all year. But this senior season for Baker Mayfield has been unbelievably efficient. Of course, we got much more college football to come your way. And then at the end of the night, Sports Center at night with Stan Verrett and Linda Cohen from LA. They get you set on the whole day of college football, AL, NLCS games, NHL, NBA, and NFL news. As Baker Mayfield has a Big 12 record of at least two touchdown passes in 19 straight games. And his second one today was incredible. Sermon wrapped up on third down. So Texas, that final timeout. Big tackle right there by Malik Texas Jefferson. Texas calls their final timeout of the half. And they managed that well defensively as 57 seconds remain with Oklahoma punting. Now the, the critical thing for Oklahoma is your punt snap and getting the ball out. Because I would imagine Texas, who worked a lot this week on punt rush, will come after Seibert with everything they have. I still don't understand that fourth and about seven or eight yeah. early in the fourth quarter when you had a 44-yard field goal attempt and you go for it on fourth down. Would have been a two-point game here. Well, Tom told us at the hotel the other night that he was not confident. I mean, you can tell he was not confident with where he was at from the field goal standpoint. He did make one in the first half to show Tom a little bit of confidence, but obviously in that position, he didn't feel good about the 44-yard attempt. No, he's got a lot to feel good about, about where this program is right now. He said, hey, we're not a finished product, but I know we're headed in the right direction. Are they? Defense looks salty. Disposition is different, and it has been fun today. So Cyber back on to punt. Under a minute to play. And Bill Maps is going to put his heels on the 16 for the Horns. Setting up a return instead. It's a good punt. Fair catch inside the 10 on a 4.4 hang, driven all the way back 52 yards from Cyber. A flag is down at the 48. We will check on that. Holding by number nine of the receiving team. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal. First down. I don't understand that. I mean, if you're... If you're not going to go after the punt, if you're going to set up a return, you can't fair catch that. you got to go ahead and try to return the football. Well, especially inside the 10. Yeah. So now you have 49 seconds and no timeouts. And the ball all the way back at the three. And the ball is the in, yeah, back on your own three. So. 49 seconds remaining. Okoronkwo coming back out yeah. there. He has been a warrior today chasing the true freshman quarterback for Texas, Sam Ellinger. Ellinger was knocked out a few plays on the last possession and now 97 yards away from something very memorable. Or will Oklahoma simply close it out and stay alive for the playoff hunt? He connects. Good way to start things. As Colin Johnson is always a threat. 24-yard reception there. Lock stop while they move the chains. No timeouts remain for Texas. There's Ellinger again. They only bring three. Now a little delay of tracking with Murray. And he gets it complete that time. The little Jordan Humphrey for nine yards. Out of bounds. Stops the clock with half a minute to play here in Dallas. You know, Oklahoma's got a lot of split safety look. The, ru the ruling on the field was a catch before he went out of bounds. The previous play is under further review. Let's take a peek at that last catch here. Does he secure it? And a little juggle, but he's able to drag that foot. But does he have firm control of the ball is the question. Kind of had it pressed against his leg with his wrist. Not sure that's secure catch. Now we've got longtime Big Ten official Bill Lamagne with us, our rules expert. Bill, what do you see? I don't see that as being good control of the ball. Replay should be turning this into an incomplete pass. Definitely kept the right foot in, but I agree. I don't think he has firm control of the catch. Yeah, he started to when that foot was in bounds, but he did not finish the control. And that ball being moving from his hands, being pressed to his uh, leg, 
that's not control enough. So that's this is an incomplete pass. Yeah, you say finish as a key word there. You got to have that firm control and maintain possession for the entire play. The process has to be completed to be a catch. Well, that was a nine yard reception ruled on the field, but likely to be overturned. And it would be second and 10 then. Talk about Tom Herman's bad memory from this rivalry game. Lincoln Riley's first experience in this game was as a offensive coordinator with Oklahoma back in 2015. Big upset. A one and four Texas team. Beat Oklahoma, sacked Baker Mayfield six times. And now he is 30 seconds away from a victory in his first game as the head coach. Last three years, this game has been decided by seven points or fewer. We're right After into the further review, the receiver did not gain possession until he was out of bounds. It will be second down at the 28-yard line. Please set the clock to 31 seconds. 31. You mentioned 2015. Oklahoma was 4-0. They took the loss to a Texas team that was 1-4. They went to number 19 in the AP poll the next week, but they won their next seven games. They made the college Please football set playoff. The game clock to 31 seconds. That guy right there has talked plenty this week about what happened against Iowa State. Don't worry about Thank it. You. We control things. Second down. And they stay alive. Keep heading towards the college football playoff. Of course, TCU still looms. Bedlam still ahead. Elliger is just going to try to make the most of that as the clock will count down now. Desperation time for Texas as he will clock it on third down, leaving a fourth down. Yeah, I mean, that's not ideal because he dropped the snap on second down. He had to run it. And because they have no timeouts, he had to spike it there. So it's fourth down with 19 seconds left. Fourth and five to stay alive. They're already pointing at the left tackle. Well, the left tackle moved, but Okorwankwu made a move at him that caused him to rock in his stance. It's going to go against Texas. But Denzel Okafor was reacting to the move of Okorwankwu. A false start by number 78 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. Fourth down, Ellinger. And the clock will only stop temporarily as he runs ahead for the first down. Again. So he will need to clock the ball as soon as possible. And he does that with efficiency. Stephen Parker went oh, down uh, with cramps at the end of the play. This has been happening in the defensive backfield time and again. Parker was down moments ago with cramps as well. The good news for Texas here is it gives them a there chance no to get some water as there was an injured player on the field. So no play. They should reset the game clock then. Texas has a chance to talk about the play. They're not in a hurry up situation right now because of Stephen Parker being down. Please set the game clock to 11 seconds. 1-1. One, one. Now they got to be ready to go because once things are reset here, the ball should go on the snap. And Texas is lined up to do so. A lot of support clock, staff still on, still on the field for Oklahoma. 
Oh, yes, it was a first down, so it's just the temporary stoppage. So as soon as he's set, clock it, take a second off. Oklahoma still with two timeouts remaining, and they can talk things over if they choose. Oklahoma calls their second timeout of the half. So now they don't have to clock it. 30-second timeout. A reminder that coming up later tonight on ABC, it is Utah going up against Sam Darnold and USC. 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. I don't get why you call timeout there. If you make them snap it and clock it, you're going to run some time off That's the right. clock. Then they got to line up and, you know, call another play. I almost think there was so much confusion yeah. there that Oklahoma wanted to simply say, okay, let's understand what we want to accomplish here as well. Well, they're playing prevent. I mean, they've got three guys that are casually kind of rushing. Look how deep their safeties are. They, they, I guess maybe that's what they did in the timeout is they backed everybody up. Now they've got a true prevent defense with four guys down inside the 20-yard line. And one of the defensive backs on the field right now for Oklahoma is their star tight end, Mark Andrews. That's actually a smart move with his ability. As that ball, was that caught? What an acrobatic catch out of bounds with four seconds remaining. Little Jordan Humphrey. Well, if this catch stands, the Jordan good thing is it at least gives. The and then fell out of bounds. If this play stands, Look at that body the control. Is under further review. His, his, foot was left foot, out of his left foot was out of bounds before he went up in the air. Amazing level of athleticism shown by Lil Jordan Humphrey. It's out right there. And I think it's out when he secures it. Boy, that's tough. Tremendous effort. If it stood, it would allow Texas to throw the ball to the end zone. If this play is wiped away, Sam Ellinger can't get the ball in the air to the end zone. That play came from the Oklahoma 43. If you take and jump from out of bounds and you touch the pass, by rule, that's an incomplete pass. So when he was out with his left foot, it should be incomplete. He had to reestablish himself back in bounds first before touching the pass. Yeah. So this is an incomplete pass. As soon as we looked at it there, Bill, we saw that the foot started out of bounds, and then he went up to try to get that ball, which was, as we said, incredible body control. But they should come to that same result that Bill Lamagne just offered up. Well, again, the, the big difference is if this ball would stay on the 44 and a half yard line, Sam Ellinger could get the ball all the way to the end zone and you could take a shot at a Hail Mary play. If this goes back to the original spot, he doesn't have the arm to get it all the way to the end zone, I don't believe. So there's Humphrey. You see the left foot out of bounds. Did not reestablish himself in bounds before he went to touch the football. Bill, does it matter if the defender touches the ball first? No, absolutely right. not. It's if I'm the person going to touch the ball, I have to have had inbound status first. Then I have a right to touch the ball. Which he did not the way no, we he, saw it there. He was up in the air, jumping from out of bounds, touched the ball, incomplete. Some challenging plays in the last yeah. series there. That prevent defense, as we noted, includes Mark Andrews, the six foot five, 250 pound tight end who often flexes out and had the spectacular 59 yard touchdown catch from Baker Mayfield the moment of this fourth quarter. They're already backing it up. <laughs> so only four more anxious seconds for Oklahoma. I hate that such a great game has gotten snagged up here a little bit at the end with calls, but I mean, I appreciate that they want to get it right, you know, and make the right calls. It's just it's such a beautiful game to be a part of, to watch. And that guy just, was a big reason why oh, Mayfield took the huge hit, had a 300 pounder fall on his shoulder. After further review, the receiver landed out of bounds and it's incomplete. It's second down at the 42 yard line. Then the Heisman contender said, I'm going to launch one here. The go-ahead touchdown 
And then the Oklahoma defense looking to hold off Texas. So if you can't get the football all the way to the end zone, do you have some kind of a trick play with a lateral or multiple laterals involved as an alternative? Well, let's find out. Let it begin as Warren throws it back. Ball is on the ground. Picked up, sent back to Ellinger. Ellinger gets it over. And now Humphrey trying to shake loose. As they are going to rule this down at the 48. And it's all about Boomer Sooner. In another memorable one.